Hello, everyone. Welcome to Holy Hydrogen. We've got this powerful educational series, and our special guest speaker today is Dr. Sunny Nason. She is our guide along this path of health and wellness. She is our naturopathic friend, and we're thrilled that she's going to be sharing a bit more of her unique perspective on the health benefits of molecular hydrogen. Sunny, how are you doing today? I'm doing so well, thank you. This topic has gotten me pretty excited because um, it just covers such a broad area to be able to help in so many ways with our health and wellness. And today, what I wanted to talk about are the mechanisms of underlying biological effects of molecular hydrogen. So molecular hydrogen is naturally produced in the intestines when the right activity is happening from fiber and then ultimately flushing metabolic waste. But um, the use of molecular hydrogen therapeutically in certain areas around the world um, has shown extraordinary efficacy for a broad spectrum of, spectrum of health concerns. And so for us here in the United States, uh, there were some fantastic studies covered early in the 2000s, but then in 2007, a landmark finding that molecular hydrogen significantly suppressed brain damage caused by stroke. And since then, research and studies around the application of molecular hydrogen in a variety of ways has emerged. And we know the positive outcomes when dealing with some disease causing health issues. They are in so many studies that are out there now, such as major health concerns like dementia and Parkinson's, diabetes, cancer, immune function, and now moving into preventative and proactive usage as well. Now, I really enjoy working in the arenas of preventative measures and anti-aging. The fact that Antioxidant stress plays a giant role in our ability to reduce inflammatory responses that even on the outside could make us look older, and we don't want that, but let alone the toll that it's taking internally. So molecular hydrogen is right at the top of the list for its antioxidant-like activity for the physical body. So some of the information that I cover today is to let you all know what's going on in the realm of molecular hydrogen and how absolutely fascinating it's been in a clinical setting, but now also being able to bring that effectiveness right into your own home. So some of you that watch these videos are in a clinical practice, and I'd like to share a little bit of information to be fair for everybody that tunes in that you know, maybe this is something that you, you're looking at bringing into your work, but everybody, we can all agree that gaining more knowledge about therapeutics for our own self-care and measures that we can take, just a little bit of understanding to benefit our well-being and the uh, that adds more value to our lives and have proven to help us live healthier longer. So we've been talking about drinking hydrogen water and um, today, I'm going to focus a little bit on inhalation of molecular hydrogen, and really what we have found is that the combination of the two, um, particularly in you know your home setting in a safe manner, has been extremely effective for overall health and wellness. And while we pay attention to the subject of anti-aging, something that's been a big concern about our aging population are the stats that more and more people at a younger and younger age, um, you know, having insults to brain tissue. So let's talk about the brain for a moment. At a, at a cellular level, brain aging is characterized by growing inflammation, oxidative stress, increased genomic instability, um, altered metabolism, the destruction of protein homeostasis, which causes the accumulation of cellular waste. And then in some cases causes, you know, deterioration when we don't want that happening. So what are some of the things that create harm in the brain? Better yet, let's look at why. Um, it's usually a combination of it's dietary lifestyle choices, but it can also be accidental contact with harmful substances or some type of traumatic injury. Okay. So let's take a traumatic brain injury where an injury occurs, maybe, maybe high speed, 
you know, the brain rotates a bit this in the skull and the rotational movement damages axons and blood vessels. And then damage can happen in specific areas of the brain, maybe cranial nerve, you know, resulting in paralysis or of facial muscles or um, losing sensations, maybe altered sense of smell, vision problems, you know, either dizziness, um, double vision and maybe problems swallowing, you know, a cognitive deficit with memory and judgment and ability, maybe losing sense of, you know, concepts of time and space. Geez, we do not want that, you know, but, you know, our brains have a lot of activity happening at any given moment to contribute to how we're able to think and function. So there are sections of the brain with certain responsibilities and pathways that need to be clear and open. One of those pathways um, getting a lot of attention right now as we understand it better is the NRF2 pathway. Um, NRF2 activates the cellular antioxidant and anti-inflammatory response by inducing the transcription of several genes to protect from the effects of insults. And it's been traditionally considered a tumor suppressor because the cytoprotective functions are deemed to be the main cellular defense mechanism against exogenous or endogenous injury or insults, including oxidative stress and also xenobiotics. Um, what are xenobiotics? Well, it's uh, they're chemical compounds that are foreign to the biological system. So with respect to animals or humans, Xenobiotics include drugs or drug metabolites, um, environmental compounds like pollutants that aren't produced by the body. And in the environment, xenobiotics include synthetic pesticides and herbicides, um, industrial pollutants, things that, that would not be found in nature. So any of these could happen to our brain, causing difficulties. Um, maybe a combination of them. And many of us think about getting older and having our faculties, you know, for as long as possible, but also our metabolic function. And when studying about the underlying cellular mechanisms of aging, we have found that a variety of me metabolic, biochemical, you know, molecular alterations can occur at a cellular level to contribute to the function, functional losses, you know, during, during the aging process. And it's been discovered that administering molecular hydrogen reduces oxidative stress and improves redox homeostasis, partly mediated via the NRF2 pathway, which regulates levels of glutathione, um, superoxide dismutase, catalase, et cetera. You know, I want to share there's a testimony that came in. It was very powerful, actually. Um, I want to introduce to you uh, Judy. And she was presenting with advanced neural injury symptoms. And I would love for you to take a listen to this share. Please, Craig. So Catherine Brache Nelson uh, shared this incredible story, as you said, Dr. Sonny, about her mother's use of hydrogen. And while we don't want to make any medical claims, we do want to share the exciting email uh, Catherine sent us about her mother's experience. I'm just going to quote directly uh, from the email. My name is Catherine. This is my mother, Judy. The pictures you see are day one, day three, day six, and day 17. The results have been incredible. She's 82 years old. She has moderate to severe Alzheimer's and has been in an assisted living since 2014. You can see the color has returned in her iris in just 17 days. The pictures speak for themselves. She was able to hold a utensil and use it, which she had lost the ability to do. I haven't seen her smile that big for a long time. Even my siblings are beginning to notice changes. I can't wait to see what next week will bring. At the time of her first treatment, she had a non-displaced hairline fracture of her hip. She is now able to stand without assistance and take steps, which she isn't supposed to do, but uh, the staff can't keep her down. Judy is using more words and doing less mumbling. Although she's still doing some, she's talking a lot more. I can't thank you enough. Even if this is all the healing we can get, I'll take it. 
Nothing I've tried has done this much in the amount of time, and I've tried a lot of things from supplements to medications to diet. These results truly are amazing. I am very grateful. You have my permission to use this testimony and pictures if it can help someone else. I'm all for it. Sincerely, Catherine Brechet Nelson. So fantastic. And of course, you know, in the beginning there, we were talking about maybe um, Alzheimer's or dementia as part of Alzheimer's, you know, um, that is augmented by the regulation of autophagy. So getting rid of the parts of cells that we no longer need, repairing and recycling so that the cells can behave like they were when they were younger. And of course, so that we can live the healthiest for the longest. And, you know, there have been over 2000 scientific publications now continuing to demonstrate favorable biological effects of molecular hydrogen, some of which were included in the testimony there too, because it wasn't just about brain function, but uh, it's got, you know, it's, it's antioxidant status, um, reducing inflammation, improving even cholesterol levels, decreasing uh, sympathetic nerve activ activity, improving athletic performance. It's clear that hydrogen's anti-apoptotic uh, protective effects modulate signal the transduction, influencing gene expression and modulating even protein chain activity, including mTOR. For those of you who are interested in mTOR is a, a protein that tells cells when to grow and divide and survive. So NASA has been using hydrogen for the astronauts in training to help with gravity and motion sickness. It's used for decompression sickness. It is a neuroprotective, also used in acute carbon monoxide poisoning and the inhalation of which can be also used for people experiencing problem with their kidneys to have a better job of delivering molecular hydrogen to the circulatory system. I'd like to push on to this next slide, which is uh, talking about some of the other benefits that, um, you know, we'll just, we'll just touch base on some of these today, and then we'll continue with our discussion on another day as well. Let's bring that up, Craig, the first one, slowing the aging process. Next, please. Reducing muscle soreness. You've also seen this with, um, with our athletes as well. So, and those people that are, you know, getting on their brand new Peloton, uh, <laughs> which is me. <laughs> Next one, please, Craig. Uh -huh. Fighting nagging fatigue. This is all over, right? It could be uh, attributed also to what people consider adrenal, adrenal fatigue. Next one, please. Concentration and focus, right? Directly related to brain activity. We've been discovering, um, you know, more and more of that and discussing that today in a broad spectrum, but those studies are there as well. Next one, please. Skin health. We discussed skin deep was our last uh, episode. And I shared a personal story about that as well. But in many places all over the world, uh, including Japan, which is really the leader in this, they have been using molecular hydrogen for their skin, bathing in it, um, putting maybe the tablets and bathing in it and are, or they've noticed that, uh, what's considered age spots have been lightening. They call it a whitener as a in translation, you know, from language to language, but, um, and uh, helping with skin irritation or, or moles or things that pop up on the skin. Next one, please. Immune function, overall immune function. This one is, it, it's kind of a no brainer. It's when one thing happens and we start to produce that homeostasis in the body, then our immune function is automatically increased. So next one, please regulating autophagy. So getting rid of the cells that we do not need anymore, and then making room for those energetic responses in ATP to come in and give us more energy again. Next one, please. Targeting the mitochondria to produce energy, which is we had talked about ATP in the very first session. And that is directly related to the decrease in the oxidative stress that was the very first thing discovered about using molecular hydrogen. And funny enough for you party goers, uh, it's also really good for hangovers. <laughs> I know business dinners that you've gone out and had a little, 
had a little fun or maybe introduced some wine or something and you're having a reaction to those. But it has been noted that in order to help with uh, the symptoms of having a hangover, that molecular hydrogen has been effective in that as well. So, you know, what we are really interested in here is continuing to discuss ingesting the longest lasting, most stable, pH neutral, non-toxic natural hydrogen on the market. And that's what we'll continue to talk about here. If you would like to go to the Holy Hydrogen website, holyhydrogen.com and go to the research that's listed uh, near the bottom of the first page, you will start to understand why it's so exciting to talk about these things and where it branches off into. But understanding molecular hydrogen as a whole and how simple it can be to ingest that just by drinking the water and, in, and inhaling the, the hydrogen gas in combination and doing that at least one time a day. Please join me next time when I talk about the efficacy, the proper usage, and the flow rate. Uh, I appreciate all being here today. Have a good one.